what is the right estate plan? And to help understand that, we are going to talk about ways to avoid probate and why you might want to avoid probate. Well, obviously, the reason you want to avoid probate is you don't want to go through that whole process that I just described. So how do you avoid a probate? One of the most common ways to avoid probate is through what is called a revocable living trust. And many financial planners throughout our country say everybody must have a revocable living trust. And I'll have to say that really they shouldn't be giving legal advice. How can they say everybody needs one? Because how do they know what the laws are in, you know, the state where you live? Again, I'm speaking about particularly Washington state right now. But in Washington state, since our probates are relatively easy, straightforward, non-intervention, there's not a big push to have revocable living trusts. And there's some good reasons not to that I'll get into. But that's not to say that a revocable living trust isn't a really good estate plan. It depends on your circumstances. The other estate planning tool, the primary estate planning tool, is a will for passing assets on your death. So we're going to be talking about a trust, a revocable living trust, versus a will. And we're going to start with revocable living trust. So what is a revocable living trust? It is a legal document that you sign and you, since you're signing it and it has to do with your assets or your assets and your spouses, you'll be the grantor of it when you're creating it. It's also called the trustor. You likely will be the trustee and maybe your spouse will be the trustee too. What that means is trustee is the person who is in charge of managing the trust and you will be the beneficiary and your spouse probably too of the trust so you get all the benefits of all the assets in the trust and because it's a revocable living trust it's a see-through entity for tax purposes which means that you don't need to go out and get a new tax id number you use your own social security number. So you have this legal instrument. It is intended to manage all your assets. And the primary purpose of this is that upon your death, the assets go where you say they go without you needing your estate to go through the probate. So in order for your revocable living trust estate plan to work, you need to put all your assets into the trust. That By that, I mean you need to retitle your bank accounts, your investment accounts. You need to do a deed on your house to put the house in the trust. You know, as you go forward, there's some maintenance involved with the trust. It's not a one and done thing. And that's where I think people really run into trouble is they don't realize that, hey, you know, there's a new CD offering at 5% interest. So I'm gonna go take some money and open it up at this new financial institution. I'm gonna put the CD in my own name. That's problematic because you need to put that CD in the name of the trust, in your name as trustee of the trust. So where people run into troubles with the trust is because they don't understand it, they don't maintenance it correctly, and on their death, all the assets aren't titled in the name of the trust. And if all the assets are not titled in the name of the trust that have to be, then what happens is these assets outside of the trust need to be captured and brought back into the trust. Well, how do you do that? That is done through what is called a pour over will. When you sign your new revocable living trust, when you created it, you also signed a will. And that will said that any assets that aren't in my trust will be captured by probate and put into the trust. So not only do you have a trust administration on your death, but because you don't have all the assets in your trust, there's also a probate on your death. That means what you intended to avoid a probate by having a trust is not avoided. There are a lot of stories. I'm sure a lot of attorneys can, and you probably have heard of, you know, trusts that didn't work correctly. 
One of the ones that really stuck with me was an attorney had drafted for this single person with a very modest estate, um, a revocable living trust. And the attorney didn't, whatever happened, the house did not get put into the trust. So remember what I said, the asset isn't in the trust, there has to be a probate. So this single man had no kids and all he wanted was he had loads of nieces and nephews and he just wanted his favorite nephew to get his bank account and to get his house. And that's what the trust said, but the trust wasn't funded. So instead of the trust working properly, there needed to be a probate. And recall what I said with a probate, when you do a probate, you have to give notice to all the heirs at law. In this case, there was something like 18 heirs at law. So there was a lot of work that was required because the trust wasn't properly set up and funded. The nephew ultimately got what he was entitled to, but there were a lot of unnecessary legal fees and work because the trust wasn't set up correctly. And that is really not that uncommon. Um, and there were simpler ways to avoid probate that I will talk about in a moment. Um, but the point of it with a revocable living trust is it can work to avoid probate. If you understand your trust, if you perhaps meet with your attorney every couple years or five years and say, hey, is the setup right? Am I doing this right? Another issue that we often see with all estates, probate estates, trust estates, is that not all assets are going to be directed or captured by a trust or a will. So think about your um, 401k or your IRA. It has what's called a beneficiary designation on it. And you want to make sure that the beneficiary designation is correct, that it pays to whomever you want to receive it. You don't want it to be without any direction because it could pay to your estate and if it pays to your estate versus paying to a person, then there's um, some bad tax consequences that come from that. So oftentimes people just don't realize that one of their biggest assets is not taken care of by their revocable living trust or their will, that they have to actually make sure that the beneficiary designation on that asset is correct. So how do you know that? If you're doing your own estate plan, you likely don't. Your lawyer needs to be talking with you about all these, what we call non-probate assets, IRAs, life insurance policies, 401ks, 403bs, that sort of thing. So a revocable living trust can be a really good idea to avoid probate. 